is Jasper Milliken, and I am the deacon for the week. Uh, I better hold the microphone up because I got a criticism this morning that someone couldn't hear me. I was wondering if you've ever decided to do a project or do something, and you have the question to come up, well, is it really worth it? Is it going to be worth all the effort I'm putting into it? And uh, we say, so what? But um, the greatest use of life is to spend it for something that will last, outlast it. Jesus tells his disciples to store up treasures in heaven, for there your treasure is. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And that's from Matthew 6, 20, 21. Doing God's work in God's way brings meaning and passion to life. Life in tune with God runs smoothly. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Matthew 6, 33. We need to be out here doing God's work because that will put us treasures in heaven. Uh, all these other things that we have, uh, they won't go to heaven with us. Would the ushers please come forward? Father, we come to thee tonight just thanking thee, first of all, for the many, many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. And Father, we do pray that we will lay up treasures that will last in heaven, dear Lord, and not the treasures that we have here on earth. Father, we ask that you will be with the ones that are hurting, because we know we have ones out there that may have lost loved ones. We ask that you will be with them and give them the comfort that only you can give, dear Lord. Father, there are others that have different procedures that will be going into the hospital or are at the hospital, dear Lord, taking radiation and other different tests, dear Lord. We just ask that you will be with each and every one. Father, we ask that you will be with Brother Eddie as he preaches a sermon tonight, dear Lord. Father, we ask now that you will take this offering and use it to further your kingdom. In thy name we pray. Amen.
and Michelle was singing in the choir. I tried to get them to do a special tonight. She said they hadn't practiced. I told her it hadn't stopped none of our folks before. So that's, they could just come right on up and sing. I found this laying on my desk when I went back after our nominating committee. We had a church softball team this year for the first time. We didn't win a game this year, but we won the Sportsman Award this year. I tell you what, being a good ambassador for Jesus is more important than winning the game, isn't it? Everybody that played on the team, attempted to play on the team this year. Stand up, all of you. Everybody would help. Kenny? I tell you, they had a good time this year. We've got a few minutes, and I meant to do this, but I've got a message I want to share, too. Uh, would anybody like to share a, a vacation Bible school testimony or praise? Anybody have a vacation Bible school testimony or praise you'd like to share? <laughs> Jeff? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jeff. Anybody else got a praise or a testimony? Thank you, WT. Anybody else? Mop? Hey, everybody, that is Mop. He got a haircut, okay? Mop was our only casualty this week. The pavement flew up and hit him one night. <laughs> Jim? Well, I Thank you, Jim. Anybody else got a testimony or praise? Thank you. Thank you, man. Anybody else?
we had a good crowd of adults. They had a different teacher every night. Earl Brown come, taught them on Sunday night. And I know everybody enjoyed that. Charles taught one night wherever Charles went. There he is. Uh, Kenny taught. Uh, Hobart taught. Who else taught? Doug. Doug taught. So they had a great, great class. But what I enjoyed about Bible school was just seeing the smile on it. Everybody was just having such a good time and laughing. And you could see the joy. Uh, on each face, especially the kids' faces. And I know bus ministry is a lot of work, but I don't know how many times I heard kids say this week, I can't come to church unless somebody comes and gets me. Nobody will bring me to church. It's important we pick them up Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Because the more we have them in church, the more we're going to teach them about Jesus and show them the love of Jesus. I know that's a lot of work, but uh, if we're going to get them here, we need to get them here every time we have church. Anybody else? Anybody else? Don't you pray with somebody and see them ask Jesus to come into their heart? Stephanie come out of that room with those three little girls, and I tell you what, her face was shining just as much as those little girls was. But I had a little girl in that I was talking to, and after all three of them prayed the sinner's prayer, I said, I want you to know there's rejoicing in heaven because you're saved. I said, God is proud of you tonight. And I said, I'm proud of you tonight. And I said, when you get home, you tell your mom and daddy, they'll be proud of you. And she just looked at me, so serious, and she said, my mom and daddy could care less whether I come to church. And I said, I just want you to know we love you, and we're proud of you. And they need to hear that, because they don't hear that a lot from other folks. Anybody else? It's good to see all y'all here tonight in church too. Good to see all of y'all here. But we just had a we just had a great week this week. Anyone else? He had, a, he had a good team down there. And I know we mentioned everybody this morning, 
but Helen did an excellent job with the puppets this week. The kids just thoroughly enjoyed the puppets. Anyone else? If not, turn to Galatians chapter 5. Let me ask you this before I read this scripture tonight. How many of you are happy? Jasper, why are you happy? Okay. Anybody else want to share why they're happy? Amen. Anybody else? Amen. Well, let me say this, Jim. <laughs> Let me read to you what Galatians chapter 5, 22 and 23 says. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Did you notice that word happy is not there? The fruit of the Spirit is is love and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness and temperance. It says against such, there's nothing else like it. There's nothing uh, against such, there is no law. You know, everybody wants to be happy. And if you ask people uh, what their number one ambition in life is, a lot of people say, well, I just want to be happy. I just, I just want to be happy in life. Truth is, there's a lot of happy people in the world, but there's more unhappy people in the world. You can find unhappy people everywhere you go. You just look at people's faces. Everybody has a, an ideal of what makes them happy. Most people think, well, if I have a good day, I'll be happy. But you can't be happy on just the good day. You have to be happy on even the bad days. I don't know if you saw this in the newspaper the other day. I don't, there's a little article, and I can't remember. I think it was uh, one of Billy Graham's uh, things, but it, it said, What makes a bad day? And he was talking about joy. And uh, he gave some uh, suggestions as to what makes a bad day. He said, it's a bad day when your birthday cake collapses under the weight of the candles. <laughs> he said, it's a bad day when it costs more to fill your car up with gas than it did to buy it. And my favorite when he had several, my favorite one was, it's a bad day when you take your income tax check to the bank and it bounces. <laughs> and we may not be far from that, that happening. Folks, it's easy to be happy when everything's going your way. But what about the rest of your life? Are you happy only when things are going your way? Just about everybody lifted up their hand and said, I'm happy. But what if tomorrow's not as good as today? Will you still be happy? Folks, if you're only happy when you're having a good day, when the circumstances are right, you're going to be unhappy for most of your life. And we know that one of the fruit of the Spirit is joy because Paul just told us that. The fruit of the Spirit is joy. Paul also reminds us in Philippians chapter 4, verse number 4. 
It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, Rejoice. Happiness depends on what's happening in your life, the circumstances of your life. We're happy today because things maybe just worked out good. Had a good Bible school. Had a good worship service. We've had a good day. But tomorrow we may not be happy because tomorrow may not be as good as today was. But folks, listen. Joy is different from happiness. Joy is something that goes much deeper. Joy is an attitude. I'm even going so far to say this tonight. Joy is a choice we make. We can choose to rejoice. We can choose to have joy. It's your choice to rejoice. You can choose to rejoice regardless of your circumstances. Doesn't mean you have to have a smile on your face. Doesn't mean you have to be happy. But you can have joy in all your circumstances. Folks, joy is what makes life enjoyable. That makes sense, doesn't it? If you have joy, you're going to be happy, no matter what your circumstances are. Jesus gave us an abundant life, and he wants us to experience that abundant life. He doesn't want us to go around with a frown on our face. He wants us to show the world we've got the love of Jesus, and you can't do that with a frown on your face. Folks, we have joy because God has a purpose for every one of our lives. In fact, he has a purpose. Now listen. He has a purpose for every situation in your life. He has a purpose in the good stuff that happens. He has a purpose in the bad stuff <coughs> that happens. Romans chapter 8, <coughs> verse 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to His purpose fulfilling his plan, working out his will in your life. We need to realize, folks, God's in the life-changing business. We saw some lives that were changed in Vacation Bible School. <clears throat> I know Jasper had an opportunity to talk to some, and Stephanie had an opportunity to talk to some, and I think WT talked to, to some, and I talked to some, and I don't know if anybody else had an opportunity to it. But just to listen to those children and to see how serious they are about wanting a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And just see, and I told them, I said, when you get home and look in the mirror, you're going to see the same person on the outside. But Jesus is doing something on the inside. Folks, that's what Jesus does. He takes a life that's placed in his hands, he moves into their heart, and he changes their lives. That's why the Bible says in Romans 5, 3, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Do you hear that? Glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Whatever happens in your life is there for your good. Even what happens that you look at as bad is happening and working out for your good, if you love the Lord and trust the Lord and have patience to see what the Lord wants to do in your life. The Greek word translated tribulations or sufferings refers to anything that puts stress on your life, anything that puts pressure on your life. That's the trials of life, that's the troubles of life, that's the disappointments of life, the dis discouragements of life. And many people say, and I've heard people say this, you know, if I could just get rid of this problem, I'd be happy. If I could get rid of this stress, I'd be happy. If I could get rid of this pressure, I'd be happy. Folks, you're never going to get rid of your stress. You're never going to get rid of your pressure. You're never going to get rid of all of your problems. All of us are going to experience tribulations, problems, discouragements, sufferings all the days of our life. I, like I used to hear a preacher say, God didn't promise you a rose garden. He just promised he'd be with you. And I've noticed this. When people say, oh, if I could just get rid of this big problem, I'll be happy. You know what happens when they get rid of that big problem? 
they began to notice all those little problems they've got. They began to notice all those smaller problems. And they didn't see all those smaller problems because they were focusing on the big problem. Now the big problem's gone. They notice they've got a lot of little problems and they're still not happy. Joy is learning to enjoy the life that God has given you in spite of your problems, in spite of your sufferings, in spite of your disappointments and discouragements. Folks, listen. Joy is not the absence of problems. Joy is realizing the presence of God in the midst of your problems. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to be afraid. Why? Because God's right here in the midst of this valley with me. Folks, you and I can be positive even in a negative situation. There's so many negative Christians in the world today. Folks, we ought to be positive. We ought to be positive because we know that whatever situation we find ourselves, God's got a purpose for having us where He has us at that particular time. And no matter what happens to us, folks, our God's in control. And folks, if you don't already know it, He's big enough to take the bad stuff and make it out to work for good in your life. Our God is a big God. It's all a matter of our perspective. How you handle your problems makes a huge difference on how you react to your problems. Ever see anybody that gets mad? I mean, they're going through a difficult time, a disappointment, a discouragement. They get down on God. They get down on their self. They start having a, a pity party. Problems have a purpose in our life. I love what James chapter 1, verse 2 and 4 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. Did you hear that? Count it joy when you're going through those tough times, those times of different tribulations. It says, knowing this, and you need to underline that, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Again, look at that, where it says, knowing this. What does he want us to know? He wants us to know that the testing of our faith makes us stronger. The testing of our faith gives us strength. It gives us endurance. And it makes us so strong that we become perfect and complete not wanting anything or not liking anything. That's what God wants us to, to, to accomplish in life. God has a purpose for all that stuff that I have in my life and in your life. And folks, we ought to rejoice that we've got that stuff, whether it's good stuff or bad stuff, because God's going to take care of it either way. And we should have joy because God has given us a life of hope. You got hope tonight? I tell you what, Bible school gave me hope. Gave me hope in our future. I look around at some of our young people and our youth that are coming up. That gives me hope. Romans chapter 15, verse 13 says, Now the God of hope will fill you with all joy and peace in believing. God will fill you with that hope. God will fill you with that joy. God will fill you with that peace that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. As Christians, we ought never be without hope. As Christians, in any situation, we ought never feel like we're in a hopeless situation. We ought never feel like I'm throwing up our hands and say, it's no use, God, I quit. Have you ever felt that way? There's been times in my life when I felt like throwing up my hands and saying, I quit. There's been times in my life when I feel like I'm just kind of beating my head against the wall. And then I realize that I've got hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. I was watching TV the other night, and one of these shows that's on TV where they put you out in the wilderness without any food and any water, and you have to find your way back to where you, where you are. And, and uh, I heard them say, the guy that was leading them through, he said, a person can live 40 days without food. 
I think that's debatable. <laughs> it said a person could live 40 days without food, three days without water, eight minutes without air. But what this guy said really surprised me. He said, but a person can't live one minute without hope. He said, if you're lost and you're hungry and you're thirsty and you give up hope, you'll die. But as long as you got hope, you'll keep on keeping on. Folks, you and I are in Jesus Christ. We should always have hope, no matter what the situation is, no matter what the circumstances is. We've got Jesus. And I said this morning, when the only thing you have left is Jesus, you've got enough. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 4, Ye are of God, little children. Now listen. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Now, folks, if that's not a verse of hope, I don't know what that is. We don't have to worry because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Many people have hope, but a lot of people have blessed base their hope on the things of the world. And folks, when you put your faith and hope in the world, it's artificial. It's a pump yourself up, faith and hope. And many people base their hope on the wrong things. And when those things are gone, when those things disappear, there goes their hope. And they become discouraged. And they become disappointed. When their hope is gone, their joy is gone. Because joy is impossible without hope. But as Christians, we have reason to have hope, church. We have reason to rejoice tonight. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. There's all kinds of things that can happen to a Christian. If you're not already aware of that, you need to be aware of it. We're not immune to problems. We're not immune to sickness. We're not immune to, to bad circumstances. But the fact remains, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. All the world may be crashing down around us, but guess what, folks? Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. I can have joy because of this fact. Greater is he that lives inside of me than he who is out in the world. But that's not all. We have joy tonight because God is always with us. Romans 8, 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? You know, a lot of times we say, well, these people are speaking out against us, or those people are, are, are standing up against us, and what are we going to do? Don't worry about it. If God's for you, who can be against you? You don't have to worry. You and God are a majority. God's on our side. And I know no, no greater passage that Romans chapter 5, verse number 8. I, I mentioned that to, to these girls uh, Wednesday night when I was talking to them. God has commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He gave himself for us. We can be joyful in any circumstance because God is always with those who believe in him, trust in him, and he lives in their heart no matter what you're facing, no matter what circumstances. As believers, we have been reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. And folks, that'll last forever and ever and ever. I've got a cousin who's of a different denomination. And every time we get together, he wants to argue. And he always wants to argue the same thing. Once saved, always saved. And I'll always tell, I said, I'm not going to argue with this about this. I said, the Bible says it, and I believe it, and that settles it. And I'm not going to argue with you about it. Isaiah chapter 43, 1 through 3, one of my favorite passages. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. And I love this, for I have called thee by name. 
before I was ever born, he knew my name. Before mom and daddy ever gave me a name, he knew my name. He said, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by name. Thou art mine. And when thou passest through the waters, I'll be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Folks, if you are a believer tonight, God is for you and nothing can overwhelm you. Nothing can destroy you. The devil can't, other people can't. And God won't. And that pretty well sums it all up. No matter what you go through in life, you'll never go through it alone. And folks, that's reason to rejoice tonight. You know, joy is like a muscle. Three months ago, I joined a gym. I've got the key right here. I've never used it. Betsy joined with me. And she said last night, said, Daddy, we need to get back in the gym. And I said, I know it. I said, we need to start exercising. We need to start walking. We, we need to start eating better. But you know, Joe is the same way. It's an exercise. The more you exercise your joy, the stronger it becomes. You give your joy some exercise, folks. Develop an attitude of gratitude. In everything, give thanks. Find joy by serving God. Find joy by, by coming to church and being with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Give your time. Give your energy. Give your talents. When the nominating committee comes and asks, will you serve, you say yes. Jesus said it's more blessed to give, to receive. More blessed to give to serve than not to serve. More blessed to share the love of Jesus than it is not to share the love of Jesus. Joy comes when we get to focus off ourselves and concentrate on the Lord Jesus Christ and sharing His love and sharing His gospel with the lost and dying world. Folks, we need to choose to have joy. I started tonight by saying, how many of you are happy? About everybody raised your hand. I wonder how many could still raise their hand tonight if I asked, do you have joy tonight? Or would you be able to not raise your hand because you say, but preacher, you don't understand. I'm going through this. Or, 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 or this is happening to me. Or these circumstances are, are going on in my life. Folks, that affects your happiness, but it does not affect your joy. We need to be joyful. Make that choice to rejoice. It is a choice. And if you'll make that choice to rejoice, you'll have joy. And with that joy, you'll begin to see that joy get stronger and stronger and stronger and as that joy gets stronger, your relationship with the Lord's going to get stronger, and people are going to look at you and say, what's different about you? I got joy, 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 joy deep down in my heart. You know, there's a song that says, if you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. I think we ought to change the words to that. If you have joy in your heart then your face will show it. And the people all around us will know where that joy comes from. And it comes from Jesus. Father, I just want to thank you tonight for joy. I want to thank you tonight that, Father, we can have joy even when the bad things are going on in our life. Circumstances rob us of happiness. Disappointments rob us of happiness. Discouragements rob us of happiness, but nothing 
can take away that joy. If we have Jesus in our heart and we've trusted him, not just as our Savior, but as our Lord, and we put our hand in the hand of the Good Shepherd and we're letting him walk through all the valleys of life, all the mountaintop experiences of life. We're just saying, have thine own way, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for all that comes my way and help me to rejoice in it. In Jesus' name I pray. Let's stand as we sing. If you need to come tonight, come, would you? Jesus is tenderly.